Good afternoon, everyone. I am glad to be sharing the dais along with uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar, sir. Uh, I am thankful to Dr. Ramakrishnan, sir, for giving me this opportunity to chair today's session on newer psychoactive substances and uh, access to them in this digital era. I am privileged to be part of the burning topic. Like all the audience in this hall, I am eager to listen to the two wonderful speakers, Dr. Vidhi Kumar and Dr. Jayant Mahadevan. It's quite interesting to watch them unfold the topic with latest updates. I would like to give a brief insight into the topic before the speakers uh, take over. In somewhat uh, prophetic statement, uh, Henderson wrote in 1988 that it is uh, likely that the future drugs of abuse will be synthetic rather than plant products. They will be synthesized from readily available chemicals, will be very potent and often very selective in their action. In addition, they will be marketed very cleverly. So much to our surprise, this is a harsh and reality because of because we as a society are dealing with it on day-to-day -day basis. Newer psychoactive substances have become a global phenomena and uh, have been described as a growing worldwide epidemic. Newer psychoactive substances are sold as a legal, cheap and non-detectable substitutes for controlled drugs, which is uh, posing a potential threat to the society. In the, in the era of cyber culture, the internet acts as a ideal platform to promote and market these compounds leading to a global phenomena. With these few remarks, I hand over the session to the Dr. Ashok Kumar sir. Thank you very much. New psychoactive substance use is a global threat, is a new contemporary issue. So every mental health person should know about the uh, clinical pictures of uh, new uh, psychoactive substance abuse and uh, uh, management of uh, substance abuse dependence syndrome and about the uh, latest development in the uh, management of new psychoactive substances. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Vidhu Kumar who is going to talk on the new psychoactive substances. Uh, he is the additional professor of Department of Psychiatry, Government Medical College, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. His area of interest is addiction psychiatry. He is one of the members of the Publication Committee of IPSO Zonal Branch. I welcome Dr. Vidhu Kumar. Yes, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, you can, sir. You can proceed. Uh, at the outset, uh, I express my gratitude to Indian Psychiatric Society, South Zone, as well as the Organizing Committee of uh, IPSOCON 2021, held at Madre. And uh, I also thank uh, the chairpersons, who, the Dr. Vishala Kula, who had uh, given a good introduction to the topic. And also, uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar for his nice words. I also thank uh, my co uh, speaker, Dr. Jayant. So, I will be sharing this screen first. I think uh, the, the screen is visible, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. You can present. Okay. So, uh, there are two, actually there is some semantics, I start with some from the semantics, substances, as well as uh, the substances is one of the words used in DSM-5 to refer to uh, probably biologically active, uh, sub, uh, no, it's actually an overarching one, all biologically active uh, print, uh, uh, things. Is, is called substances and under which uh, probably the drug comes. The substance is something such as drugs or alcoholic beverages deemed harmful and usually subjected to legal restriction. And that is known as a substance. And uh, our DSO-5 and all the DSO-5 chapters refer to these uh, materials as substances. A drug is any chemical substance that causes a change in the organism's physiology or psychology when consumed, including illegal drugs, uh, illegal drugs, uh, and also 
prescription drugs, but not substances like alcohol. So that's all. Substance is an overarching term, and drug is basically one of the component one of the component substances. Coming to psychoactive substances means those substances which produces change in the mind, the psyche. And uh, you know the list of DSM five substances which include alcohol, caffeine. I go by, by going by chapter, uh, cannabis and uh, pentacyclin and other hallucinogens. This is one of the uh, chapter in DSM five, which include uh, ketamine, LSD, and uh, psilocybin. And inhalants is another group of substances classified. Uh, based on their phenomenology of withdrawal, intoxication, and uh, probably the treatment also, and opioids, which include morphine, ketamine, heroin, and many other drugs. Then sedative hypnotics, which include benzodiazepines, DHC, and stimulants like amphetamines, methamphetamine, and MDMA. And of course, tobacco is also in the there. So. And the last one is other or unknown. Basically, this unknown is actually hidden. We don't know what is happening. Even the even the clinical parlor, in the uh, probably in even in the addiction centers or in the psychiatric community or in emergency admissions, some of the phenomena which may be due to these unknown substances, and these unknown substances are actually. Or somehow, or maybe later known by drug screen or something, or by by their clinical presentation, we perceive to you know probably this is a drug. They are known as the new psychoactive substances. And most important thing is many of many of the the whatever the substance I had uh, mentioned so far, or almost all are regulated. In contrast, so these are the this uh, you know very well this website. These almost all the substances, which include the stimulants, depressants, opioids, psycho psychedelics, cannabinoids, dissociatives, and empathogens. This is the classification. This is known as a drug V, and uh, this is also there is actually it's interesting that you can look into any of these substances. It's like almost all it's a hyperlink, and you can examine these substances from the drug V. So. I just uh, showed it because these are the class of the substances which are included under the psychoactive substances. Now, uh, the main thing is uh, in the new, new or novel psychoactive substances. Basically, I said that these are all regulated. But the most important thing about the novel substances is is actually. Uh, th there is a uh, regulation status, scheduling or regulation status is actually in question, and they, their effects are like the traditional illicit drugs, which I had mentioned earlier. The class of drugs, the different substances groups, their effects. The effects are almost like the traditional illicit dr drugs, and uh, there is recent availability for recreational use. This is very important because. There should be a recent availability for recreation. Drugs may be it's a an old one, but these are not in the regulation status. They act like the illicit drug, but now it is available uh, for recreational use despite possible early synthesis of the substance. This is actually these are the components of definitions of what a new psychoactive substance is. So. Uh, An acceptable definition, which is uh, basically uh, NPSR, unregulated psychoactive mind-altering substances. NPS means no new psychoactive substances. Are unregulated psychoactive mind-altering substances with no legitimate medical use and are made to copy the effects of effects of controlled substances. And that they are introduced and reintroduced into the market. In its succession to dodge or hinder law enforcement efforts to address their manufacture and sale, this is a very comprehensive uh, definition by NIDA. Okay, now it is known by different names. For example, these are some of the names which 
are given for the psychoactive substances. The herbal highs, party pills, plant food, internet drug, research chemicals, emerging drugs, bath salts, novel drugs, etc. are many of the uh, many of the uh, names which have been given to these substances. Now, uh, these are the ways they are addressed or they are, they are, they are advertised or they are being sold in the market, in the market means in the hidden market as well as in the net. These are some of the names which are given for these new psychoactive substances. Now, which are those drugs? So, I already said there are uh, these, there are cannabis, fencyclidae, opioids, sedatives, stimulants, uh, etc. So, I actually try to classify the new psychoactive substances also in the same line. So, the first one is the cannabinoids, which acts on the tetrahydra hydrocannabinoid, and which is uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, which acts on the cannabinoid receptors, and one of the substances which is known as HU210 which was first synthesized in Israel in 1988. And uh, it is structurally similar varieties of synthetic cannabinoids unrelated to THC. Actually, uh, many other probably cannabinoid receptors acting on cannabinoid receptors but chemically not similar to THC. This is actually, it, it is THC and basically there is a uh, substitution of a hydroxy molecule in THC and also some other side chains are being produced and producing something known as HU210. So this is how an illicit new psychoactive substance is being made and uh, they come into the market. And uh, respond, actually the uh, United Nations uh, Office of Drugs and Crime Survey 2012 actually respondents to uh, this, the, 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 the in, 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 uh, UN ODC is actually surveying the emergence of the new psychoactive substances in the, in all, all over the world and uh, they identify JWH018 as the most widespread synthetic cannabinoid. This is the, the term name given for them that is the most synthetic, synthetic, uh, synthetic cannabinoid. And even in India it is available. See, this is one of the paper cuttings, which is uh, from the uh, one of the uh, uh, newspaper blogs. which says, Mumbai, why new synthetic drugs spice popular among young city girls? And it is available as chronic, spice, K2, and also some of the other names which is being given to synthetic cannabinoids are black mamba, uh, genie, etc. And uh, effects are similar to cannabis, but severe. Actually, one of the prop, one of the important already said, already said by Dr. Vishal Akula that almost all the synthetic drugs are more potent than the original agent. So, the in, the synthetic cannabinoids are also cannabinoids are also more potent, and uh, they are more severe. And some of the drugs produce more unique effects than. Uh, Okay. Now, coming to come back, come back, actually, there have been one study which had been published uh, recently in Psychopharmacology 2021, which had compared synthetic cannabinoids versus the original cannabinoids. So these are the classes. One is uh, synthetic cannabinoids, then high potency herbal cannabis, the original cannabis. And uh, the same or don't know. We, we are not uh, sure about what, what exactly is it. And they had found that this SCRA, synthetic cannabinoid receptor agonists, are having more effect. As Actually, it is greater difficulty of titration to decide effect. It is having a faster one set of action. It is having a short duration of effects and a faster development of tolerance and also this withdrawal symptoms are more severe with the synthetic cannabinoids. So, now, and these synthetic cannabinoids are commonly smoked and it's known as vaping uh, or, or rather vape and uh, also uh, they often present with nausea, collapse, dissociation, coma, 
and also drug induced psychosis these are some of the uh, symptoms why by which so that the those people consume synthetic cannabinoids do present with now so that is about one of the major class of new psychoactive substances known as the synthetic cannabinoids now coming to stimulants the second class i said the one of the other class of drugs is known as stimulants and uh, these stimulants include cocaine and uh, which is known as crack and also the class of amphetamines you know very well that amphetamines are methamphetamines amphetamine is a extra amphetamine is there in addition to that methamphetamine methamphetamine which is known as speed ice crack crystal meth these are terms usually used to give methamphetamine also uh, mdma which is uh, known well as uh, uh, ecstasy or molly so these are the drugs which are known as stimulants and there is another group of drugs which is known as catenones which is actually similar to amphetamines chemically but also having stimulant properties so these are the stimulants which is known or which is which known as illicit and had been used and is being smuggled exported and also used widely all over the world but coming to the new substances the most important is actually catenones the catenones are less known than the uh, amphetamine groups the classical drug is cat which is actually herbal product which is seen in cat i believe and this is used uh, mostly abused in the african countries and also uh, methylone methylone is another catenone which is known as explosion or top cat methadrone is another one which is one of the potent uh, new psychoactive substances which is known as mcat methadrone or meow and catenone ephedrone and methylone are structurally related to amphetamine methamphetamine catenone is to amphetamine ephedrone to methamphetamine and methylone to mdma respectively and the symptoms which by which they present are mild agitation to severe psychosis and sympathomimetic effects and high dose is uh, fatal and cardiac events are cardiac events and seizures are highly likely so this is about catenones and which is similar to so one group the stimulant group the first one is catenones and uh, this is uh, basically uh, the meow this is the powder of meow which is uh, basically the uh, methadrone methadrone is uh, basically actually gujarat ats it is again available in india this uh, it is nav 3 with meow meow party drug worth 90 lakh so the reports of use of uh, this uh, uh, methadrone in india also which is known as meow now another group of stimulants which is are which are known as ecstasy dinics and uh, other than these amphetamines and catenones are phenylethyl phenylethylamines and which is actually 2c a 2d series and these d series is known as benz benzo difluorides and actually they are known as bromo dragonfly dragonfly fly etc these are the terms by which they are known and basically they are modification of the natural substance mescaline and effect at very low doses because they are very highly potent and uh, they are hallucinogenic and endactogenic endactogenic means empathogenic actually the mood variation the sensitivity euphoria these are some of the effects of these substances and uh, effect at very low doses with hallucinogenic and the high doses may be needed for the empathetic uh, empathogenic doses these series are described to be longer last longer lasting more potent and reportedly more liable to induce one vaso constriction than other members of the phenyl phenylethylamine family adverse effects are agitation tachycardia midriasis hallucinations severe limb ischemia seizures liver and renal failure uh, and bromo dragonfly has also been has been associated with uh, many of the deaths in scandinavia so this is one group so in the uh, stimulant group first is the catenones 
second is the uh, phenethylamine known as ecstasy mimics or third group is piperacines which is which are also ecstasy remains and which include l benzyl piperacine bzp mcpp which you probably will all will be remembering about this ocd and the ocd uh, uh, producing the ocd effects and it had been used in the biological the etiology of obsessive compulsive disorder and pep pills social tonics or simply party a2 benny beer flying angel legally legal x pepex pep love or nemesis these are some of the terms for given for these uh, drugs uh, primarily mcp so two groups pepresi and phenethylamines so although i tried to classify for the first group is endogenous cannabinoids second is uh, uh, stimulants in stimulants uh, basically there is one group phenethylamines and catenones are also one another group is tryptamines although uh, basically they are distinct substances there is a lot of overlap in the clinical effects of the substances and uh, uh next is uh, hallucinogens so third class of drugs which could be probably psychoactive substances which is again ketamine mimics the classical drug is ketamine and that produce they, they are actually the hallucinogens are divided into two, two groups dissociative hallucinogens as well as true hallucinogens in the dissociative hallucinogens phencyclidine or angelic dust and the ketamine which is k special k kit kat kat these are the terms used for ketamine ketamine you know very well that it had been approved for or rather used for the treatment of uh, depression and methoxyphetal is another drug which is again dissociative the true hallucinogens are lysergic actually these dissociative drugs produces more of a dissociation depersonalization like phenomena not true more of experiential phenomena but the true hallucinogens produces clear hallucinations lysergic acid diethylamide like lsd psilocybin uh, and two c drugs which i referred to earlier and in nbo nibom drugs is another group of drugs which is uh, uh, included under the true hallucinogens and also i said about the tryptamines which in the previous slide i had used the tryptamines again comes in coming under the stimulants and they foxy methoxy alpha o alpha o dms five neo these are the terms used for the tryptamines so the stimulants the classical drugs are amphetamines but they include three groups one is the uh, catenones second is the phenethylamines and third is the piperacy group and the uh, tryptamines also comes in under the, this group so two groups of drugs i had referred to the primary illicit agents which are recognized by the agencies and the drugs which are not recognized partially recognized to be recognized drugs which are the new psychoactive substances and the third one is depressants and fentanyl is one of the drugs which have been a new psychoactive substance and uh, it has caused a lot of deaths in the us and uh, sedative drugs like benzodiazepines that is ola which is a drug uh, uh, used and that is actually a uh, It's heavily abused drugs across the globe, and street blues found to contain from 8 milligram to 48 milligrams of uh, diazepam. Then another drug known as flunitrazepam or rohypnol and GHP are uh, notoriously known as day trade drugs because of the producer sedation and uh, the take of the resistance on the part of the patient to a sexual assault. so this is fruit nitrosepa and ghp now there are some plant products see this is a case report published in indian journal of psychiatry leaf it or not a case of card dependence from india although in this particular case the subject was from not in india it was a foreigner and he presented with a card card is also known as mira card gaat or arabian tea and another drug is kratom which is and the active principle main active principle is mitragyny and which is having stimulant properties and another one is salvia divinorum 
and which is having hallucinogenous properties. And this salvia divinorum is known as Maria Pastora, sage of the steers, divine sage, Val, salvia, sally, the magic wind, purple sticky, and these are the terms used. And this is one, uh, one of the problem with these drugs is although they are abuse or culturally rather, it can produce severe uh, side effects including uh, physical side effects and kratom induced severe cardiac liver injury, histologically mimicking primary biliary cholangitis. A case report from. So, many of these substances may not be coming to psychiatrists. Probably they may land up in uh, emergency departments with the toxicity rather than probably in addition to the, in, in, although they may be they are psychoactive in lower doses. Now, so these are the main classes of psychoactive substances. Now I will just start delving into the supply. How is it being ensured? Because they are illicit. They, they are not actually the, 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 the attempt is not to make them illicit or not detected legally. And some of the things are head shops. Actually it is actually the tobacco shops or the materials for uh, uh, vaporing etc are these head shops and probably some of the similar shops are functioning in Goa and all and uh, another area is another uh, major road by the supply comes is internet and it has a hidden process which is known as a dark web and uh, probably by true identification probably they provide the drug and by the mails by the peers and second thing is uh, the supply, they change the structure periodically so that it doesn't cup into the legal net. And another way in which it is actually they are uh, exported or imported or used or uh, transported in the disguise of uh, uh, industrial or other chemicals and uh, probably just like uh, tobacco is injurious to health, likewise not for human consumption is probably the label for the, the material and same brand for different substances for example some of the uh, substances uh, probably they uh, just like uh, uh, soda and uh, liquor same brand for both likewise same brand is given before different substances and also they, they are transported as research chemicals this is the way in which uh, probably the supply of these drugs being ensured to the clients. Now, uh, this is actually uh, online availability of NPS. I think uh, uh, it will be uh, dealt in detail by my subsequent speaker. And uh, this is one of the website, Green Markets, which, uh, were pro which was providing uh, drugs for a long time for its clients by proper identification and uh, secure and encrypted online marketplaces facilitate the sale and discussion of uh, the, uh, discussion of illicit substances and exist in the dark must know the exact address to the access uh, market and also sometimes exact address they don't the exact address and also they may require a referral actually this is the process there is a uh, network is operating and finally there is an exit uh, node this is how Actually, this is a complicated process. I actually, uh, I also don't know how does it work. Okay, now, actually, I, I heard about the dream market and then I uh, googled the dream market and this is the uh, result. And uh, I don't know, no, no. what is the status of dream market. Dream market, uh, top dark web market place shutting down. This is one of the uh, uh, press reports and the hidden site had been seized and so probably they will be coming with some other name just like the pawn sites they come with other names for the to ensuring the the the, the supply of the new cycle at NPS now uh, this is again about the darknet in darknet darknet is only not only for drugs it is for for fraud and counterfeit uh, uh, is also there Guides and tutorials, actually, guides and tutorials, others, hacking and malware, and firearms and explosives. This also happens in the dark night, approximately 38%. But the major share is 68%. This is a borrowed slide. 
62 percent is basically from the uh, for the drugs and out of which 77 percent is for illicit drugs and drug related uh, chemicals for 18 percentage and pharmaceutical for 5 percentage this is one of the survey of of the uh, uh, the, the survey based on the dark net now what are the clinical presentations although i had uh, told about the different cannabinoids stimulants hallucinations their product uh, as well as their synthetic forms and the newer forms and the clinical presentations can be subsumed under they present with actually they present with concern about health and there can be an extended, dur extended duration of symptoms because they, they present with uh, symptoms uh, beyond a particular period which is not anticipated for example flu-like syndrome or some concentration problems or physical problems we need to suspect probably they are using the substance and abnormal behaviors it can range from mild abnormalities to drug induced psychosis and acute behavioral disturbance. Mild abnormalities uh, means attentional deficit, concentration deficits, etc., and drug induced psychosis and acute behavioral disturbance. Second is drug induced toxicity, which actually presents with uh, uh, basically uh, they present with uh, physical symptoms and also uh, intoxication is also another phenomenon and the consequences of method of use because they are inhaled they are injected and you know very well that the, the method itself has a risk associated with it so these are the clinical presentations of these medications and uh, this is actually a survey actually up to 2019 it had been found that the, the substances used uh, the most commonly used substance is, if you see the, the most common one is probably uh, among these uh, is phenyl, phenyl, phenylethylamines, which is a stimulant medication followed by amin, amino indase. Again, it comes under the stimulant medications. Then this is uh, uh, phencyclidine type is also there. And so this is how. Another thing is, the, the reports of the use, actually the number of uh, um, uh, new psychoactive substances, the number has gone into 542. This actually, these are the number of the psychoactive substances and they have steadily increased from 2009 to 2019. Now, there is a world uh, surveillance, but uh, probably, so you see India. So, so India is actually probably we are reporting only very minimal number of patients approximately 11 to 15 and the maximum number is from probably from the the uh, the, the part of uh, Europe uh, network for Italy Scandinavian countries and all I think that it is the same then also from the United States of America and these are the areas in which uh, probably these drugs are being uh, China it is there and also from uh, Australia. So these are the areas in which drugs are being uh, actually the, what, what I try to emphasize is that the number of uh, drugs reported from India is less maybe because of poor surveillance mechanism we don't have proper drug screens and all and uh, uh, probably this is one of the areas we need to look into. And the sources of information how do we know I already said in, it may not come, they may not come to psychiatry, they may not come for formal care, probably they, they smaller chunk may present with behavioral syndromes, but the sources of information are drug seizures, drug checking, wastewater testing, including the drainage testing, coronal data or the, the, the post-mortem data, online market surveys, uh, sample surveys, healthcare presentations and death registry. These are the sources of information by which the spread of NPS we can see. Now, who are at risk? Young people, people who are, are incarcerated, homeless people, and probably uh, this uh, for men who have sex treatment and people who inject drugs. Actually, comorbidity is the rule because those who are using alcohol, cannabis, as well as the other illicit drugs are likely to use NPS also more.
Now, this is the result of a systematic review of published case studies reporting NPS acute toxicity and the most common one is synthetic cannabinoids. Synthetic cannabinoids are the most uh, common NPS case reports seen. And uh, the second one is followed by the stimulants. But when we con consider the, the second uh, part of the graph is uh, the, the mortality or fatality and opioids having the maximum fatality and stimulants having the second one and hallucinogens and uh, synthetic cannabinoids are the, the fatal reports are less. And this is regarding the uh, drug user perspective. So this is just a uh, based on a qualitative result. Today's scene is different, starting from synthetic to semi-synthetic, from herbs to curves, all are easily accessible. With the increasing networking of information technology, people can even access many kinds of drugs which were earlier not there in their this, this entire region. With the growing stress and need for speed in life, newer kinds of drugs are occupying the market. This is the drug user perspective. Now, what can be done from the legislative and policy uh, side? And there have been some models which have been uh, there. One is uh, generic controls, actually uh, banning drugs based on uh, their generic uh, uh, nature, the generic brand. And uh, probably it may not be successful because they may change the, uh, the structure or uh, to detect them, etc. may be difficult. So uh, again, this is one policy which could be adopted. And another is analog legislation. The same, uh, actually, the, the molecule itself, we can, uh, uh, the, the, the primary molecule, we can, uh, all, all molecules based on the primary molecule could be banned or could be uh, come in the regulatory control and another policy is a blanket ban of NPS and another uh, policy is monitoring system there is something called European early warning system and uh, also the specific acts like psychoactive substances act 2013 in, uh, in New Zealand and 2016 in UK are some of the, the, the legislative and policy responses to NPS. And uh, I am going to summarize, NPS are here to stay in all globally and uh, the psychiatric fraternity, the medical fraternity should be equipped with uh, to detect the use of NPS, the physical hazards and mental health hazards it does. And the challenging areas are limitations with identifications, tox toxicology and diagnostic coding, and uh, drug-induced or related mental illness will rise. Uh, sorry for the uh, poor call, you don't forget classic drugs, but we need to be aware of the drug uh, classic drugs for abuse. So with this, I wind, my wind up my presentation. Thanks for listening from, uh, and also giving for me the chance. I actually I regret not to be present there personally to enjoy the hospitality of the team. I uh, offer a grand success, uh, grand uh, compliments for the conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhidhi Kumar. Uh, it was quite interesting and comprehensive. It yes, was uh, very much surprising to see various names given to new psychoactive, psychoactive substances uh, from your presentation. So, unfortunate thing is uh, it is available uh, across the world, across the uh, across nations. Um, uh, I think the questions and the comments will be allowed at the end of the two sessions. Uh, these drugs, the new psychoactive substances, uh, are sold in various by surrogate names and uh, various brands across the, across the countries, and uh, uh, it is available in the net. Uh, uh, so. It's unfortunate thing that uh, we have no control over them because they are unscheduled and uh, unregulated drugs. Uh, 